Hello everybody and welcome back and in this section what we will do is we will look at some of the attacks that we can use on the ports that we actually got from our scanning section. So for example we scanned our metasploitable, we found out SSH was vulnerable, we found out open ports such as FTP open port on 21, we found out SSH open port on 22. Now let's see how we can actually do some of the attacks in order to compromise the target machine. So first of all, uh, let's see how we can legit log in to the SSH. So we know that the target, and by target I mean our Metasploitable machine, is running the SSH port open, so we can see that the IP address of our Metasploitable is 192.168.1.5. So let's actually try to SSH to 192.168.1.5. Oops, SSH, not S. So SSH 192.168.1.5 and here we can actually see some of the stuff that we get from the program itself. So this is everything that we need to take in matter once we actually start coding the uh, our SSH brute forces for example or our program that will connect to the target and actually execute the uh, cat at c shadow for example command which is the command in order to see all of the saved passwords on the target linux system so let me just show you first of all the authentic the authenticity of host can be established okay the rsa key fingerprint and uh, this is the fingerprint of the target and it asks us now are you sure you want to continue connecting so this is the question that can actually present us problem once we start coding since we actually have to answer it before we start connecting and sending passwords and usernames and so on. So let's see what happens once we specify yes. It will say, uh, warning, permanently added 192.168.1.5 RSA to the list of known hosts. Now I will also show you how you can delete that afterwards, but right now let us see how we can uh, log in to the Metasploitable over SSH. Now I believe in order to do that the password is just msf admin. Now you will notice that once you type right here that will not be printed out. That is normal, just click enter after specifying the msf admin and permission denied. Not really sure why is the permission denied. It might not be msf admin, so let's try Tor. Okay, so in order, let me just find out what, first of all, the SSH password is for the Metasploit, then I will log in. Okay, so the problem was that I need to specify the account on which I'm logging on, so I want to log into the MSF admin account, so MSF admin at, oops, at 192.168.1.5. Now it will ask for the password, which is MSF admin. And as you can see right now, we successfully logged in into the Metasploitable over SSH. If I run who am I, you can see I'm MSF admin. I have config, you will see that this command will give me the IP address of our Metasploitable machine. So this means I'm logged in into the Metasploitable. LS will list files from the Metasploitable and so on. Now you can exit it with just typing exit and connection will be closed right now. But what we have to do right now is actually create a program that will automate this entire process for us and then after we actually log in it will uh, try to send back the output of the cat at c shadow command which will actually just send the root username and password and other accounts as well, usernames and passwords. Just the passwords will be hashed but uh, we will uh, actually try to crack them later on. For now on we just want to get them. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, let me just go out of the scanning section and let's make a directory called sshftp. No such file or directory. Oh, we cannot have the slash, so let's just call it sshftp, just like this. And here we have sshftp where we will code some of the our future attacks on the ssh protocol and ftp protocol. So let's go to the directory, which is this one. And right now, let us actually nano something like nano ssh login.py. We want to actually create a program that will be able to connect to the target over ssh and actually execute the command itself. So first of all, 
let us just for now on for this tutorial uh, as a beginning just code the main function and then later on we will code the connecting function and then sending the command function so first of all we need to start the user bin python line in our code and we need to import a library that we are first the uh, first encountering for now which is pexpect it will allow us to automate some of the processes in our SSH logging in. So after we do that, let us create a main function. So def main, which will take no arguments as always. We will set the host, which will be the IP address of our metasploitable, which is 192.168.1.5. We will send set user to be equal to the MSF admin. And we will set the password to be equal to MSF admin. So for now on, we only want to actually be able to log in to the SSH with our Python program. So we specify the user, we specify the admin. Uh, right now, we will create something called child, which will be our SSH shell. We want to perform the connect function on that, which is the function that doesn't really exist. So we will have to code this function in the next video. And we want to paste to that file the host, the uh, user and the password. So first of all, let's pass, paste the user, then the host and then the password. So this function connect, which we will code in the next lecture, will take these three inputs, which we will perform the connection with. So after that, once we perform the connection, we want to make a function called send underscore command which will actually send the command to this uh, SSH shell uh, and then the command will actually be cat at C shadow. So this function right here, which will, we'll also need to code, will take an input of the SSH shell, which we stored in the variable child, and it will also take an input of the command. So we can specify that command to be cat at C shadow. And for example, let's say we only want the root password, so we will group a grab root and then ps oh, pardon me ps or we can actually type ps uh, what this will do is i didn't really show you yet, this yet but if you run open a terminal you can actually run two commands at the same time so for example this command is a one command this command will basically list the uh, the at c shadow file and then it will only try to find for the lines that uh, contain root in them and then if you separate the uh, commands with the dot and then comma, you can run a different command, which in this case we will try to run ps for no reason at all, just to show you how it works, which is the showing the processes running on the target system. So let me show you if I just save this for a second. If I just go cat at c shadow, you can see here are the uh, here is that file that we need that contains the password hash value or password for root as we can see right here so we will just we will be just going for this line on our target system and if you just type here the cat at c slash shadow and then grab for root you can see we only get the line that contains the root but if you just type cat at c shadow and then uh, grab root and then dot and comma, and then ps, we can see that we grab the line that contains the password root, and we also list the running processes on our Kali Linux machine. So you can concat as many uh, as many commands as you want. So if I just type here ls as well, you can see it does both of these commands, and then the third command, it just lists, lists the file in the current directory, which at the moment is just sshlogin.py. So let us nano this uh, file right here. We basically finish the main function. Uh, the real coding of this program is actually to code this connect function, and this send command function, but it really isn't that hard. Let me just close the brackets right here so we don't get the syntax error. And down here we all we only want to actually call the main function. Now let's save this. And that would be about it for this tutorial. And in the next one we will code these two functions that we are missing. So I hope you enjoyed this introductory part for SSH attacks and I hope I see you in the next lecture where we will continue coding our SSH login program. Hope I see you there and take care. Bye.
Hello everybody and welcome back and let us continue on coding our SSH login.py. So in the previous video we actually started with our main function. We actually specify the host, the username and the password. Now all we have to do is code this connect function right here and we need to code this send command so we can actually retrieve the output of this command. So let us see how we can do that. First of all, let us start by coding the connect function since it is more complicated and since we actually uh, use it first. So let us go up here. We'll need to call it the same. So connect, it takes an input of user, host and password. And first of all, if you noticed, once we actually try to connect with the SSH to the Metasploit, it asks us, are you sure you want to continue connecting? That was the part where I told you this could present a problem to us since that uh, string could actually potentially ruin our program if we do not include it in our login SSH. So let us call that SSH underscore new key. We will need to name it the same as it is. So it uh, was something like, are you sure you want to continue connecting? So. If we receive this string, and we will receive this string, what we want to do is actually, we want to actually expect this to come to us, and then once it comes to us, we will just send yes. So we will send to the target yes, so it proceeds to actually giving us the input for the username and password. Let us continue, we can just use the const string, which we will receive, so that will be ssh. This is something that we are using. So this is the same string that we used once we actually ran it in terminal. So as you remember SSH, then we had to type MSF admin. So we will just type here plus user since the user variable is already specified to be the MSF admin. So the user variable and then plus the at. So at uh, is a must, you need to have it. And then the IP address of the target, which is in our case host. So this is basically this command right here, which we ran SSH MSF admin 192.168.1.5. If you run this in terminal, it will prompt you for username and password right after this string right here, which we specified. So right now, what we want to do is actually, we want to uh, spawn this or run this string. So we can do that with the child command. So the child, what this will be is p expect. This is where we use our library and we expect to spawn this uh, const string, which is this value right here, which is our command in order to connect to the SSH on our Metasploitable. Now what we return, so or receive, let us see what we can return from that. Return, we will just call it ret. We'll just type here child.expect. So this is something that we will actually expect from the target to send us back. We can use the pexpect.timeout. We can use the ssh new key, since the ssh new key is something that we expect right after we try to connect. As you remember, first thing that popped up was the, are you sure you want to continue connecting? And we, after that, uh, uh, are prompted with the password which can either be capital P or not capital P. So we will specify both of them. We do that with this. So first capital P, whoops, capital P, then this pipe right here, then this small letter P. Then we close the, the brackets right here and we can continue with password. So you just press the two dots right here and this will actually just uh, specify whether the or basically expect either the password with capital P or password without the capital P. So let us close this as a string and close the, the square brackets from this part right here. So don't get confused since I got, I almost got confused. Why was this in brackets and this wasn't, but this square bracket right here is uh, referring to this square bracket right here. And we also need to close this normal bracket at the end. So let me just close that one as well like this. And after that, we want to check whether the return value, since what we get from this uh, from this command right here, is either a one or a zero. 
if we retrieve a zero and the return or the red command or variable, pardon me, is zero, that means we weren't able to connect. If it is one, that means we are able to connect and we are prompted this line right here. So if we are prompted this line right here, we want to send yes to the target. So it actually uh, goes to the next step. So let us see how we can do that. We just type right here, if red equals equals to zero, we will print, oops, so minus error connecting. And we will return from this function. If red is equal to one, we will actually send to our SSH, which is our child, we will send the yes answer to this question. So child, we can do that with the command or function send line. And all we have to do is specify in brackets the uh, string we want to send. In our case, that is yes. So once we send that, we want to actually expect this password to come up. So we will type it right here. Return is now equal to child dot expect. Uh, p expect, oops, this is so hard to write, p expect dot timeout, and then here we will specify the uh, same thing as here. So let me just copy it so I don't actually write it twice. Here it is. We expect the password field to get prompted to us, and we close these brackets right here. If right now the red is equal to zero, we want to also close the program. So we will just print once again, error on connecting. Since if this red right here is also equal to zero, that means something went wrong and we can't connect to the target. Since almost always you will receive this after the question, are you sure you want to connect or to continue connecting? Error connecting, we close the string and we return. But in case that it isn't zero and that is a, nu a number one, so we want to send the password since we are get prompted to enter the password. Right now we want to child dot send line password, which is this part, this variable right here, and we want to basically expect uh, some kind of a prompt from the SSH. Now that prompt can either be a dollar sign, uh, an arrow, three arrows, a hashtag, it doesn't even matter, we will just expect any of that. What we will do, we will create a global variable uh, with a list from all the things we can expect. So first of all, let me just type child.expect and we want to actually expect a prompt. And what prompt is, is something that we didn't create yet, so here it is, prompt will be a global list which will actually hold most of the things that we can actually expect. So something like this, a single arrow, backslash dollar sign, make sure to leave space on all of them. So just like this, now let's close this list and we will expect to get prompted anything uh, like this, which will basically mean that we successfully logged in to the target since we sent a password and we got our terminal back from that target. So right after that, what we want to do, if we expect that and we receive that, we all we want to do is return the child, which is our SSH connection. Right after that, in our main function, we will actually send command to that child, which will actually gather the password from our root user. Now this send command we will code in the next lecture as well as we will test our SSH login.py program. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye. Hello everybody and welcome back and let us finish our SSH login program so we can actually successfully log in to our Metasploit framework machine or pardon me Metasploitable and actually execute the cat at C shadow command. We want to grab for the root password and we also want to run some other command in order to see if we can run multiple commands uh, with our program. So let us navigate to our Python programs, SSHFTP.
there I have my SSH login.py. Now let me just zoom this in so you can see everything better. Okay, let's nano SSH login.py. And all the thing we have to do right now, since we in the previous video we coded the connect function, which should successfully connect to the target. Uh, right now, what we want to do is actually code a function that will send the command of grabbing the root password from that target system. So we are expecting prompt right now, as we can see in our connect command, we are expecting prompt. And as soon as we get the prompted, that means that we logged in successfully, we return the connection from our SSH shell. And right now we want to code this uh, function right here, which is send command. We want to send to the uh, target system or target connection, which is this child variable right here. And this is the command that we want to execute. So our send command function should take two arguments. One of them is the uh, basically the uh, connection or basically the child and the other one is the command that we want to execute. So let us go up here. Let's make def send command. Once again, make sure that it is named the same as in your main function. It takes an input from the, now we can put here anything we want. So let's say connection and it takes the command. So this is our function. Let me just not forget these two dots at the end. And all we have to do right now is basically just connection dot send line command. This is all we have to do in order to send to the target the command. Let me just fix this since there is no G at the end of the connection. And all we want to do is expect the prompt once again, since after the, uh, after the command has been executed, we will get another prompt back. So child dot expect prompt. And what we want to print is print or not child, uh, child is our variable, we need to actually type here connection, or maybe it is easier, easier if we change this to child, so you don't get confused, basically the child and the connection is the same thing. So let us switch all of this to child, so you don't get multiple variables right here, and let us print child dot before. What this will do is this will print the output of our command that we executed on target system. So let us go to the main function once again. We set the host to be the IP address of a Metasploitable, which I will run right now. So go if you don't have it running at the moment, just go onto your virtual box, start the Metasploitable. Right now I will check if it is still the 192.168.1.5. But we don't really need to have this. We can actually prompt the user to uh, enter the name for that uh, host that they want to scan. So raw underscore input. We already know what this function does. We want to enter the host to target. So we can use something like that. We can even prompt this for the user. So raw input, enter SSH username. And we can prompt from the for the passwords. So basically, uh, raw underscore input, enter SSH password. So we prompt the users for everything. So this doesn't actually be, uh, so this doesn't actually target only one uh, one target, which is in our case metasploitable. So users can actually uh, specify any host they want to scan. Let me just go right here. Log into my. Metasploitable, MSF admin, and MSF admin. I check the IP address of our Metasploitable, it is dot one, uh, dot .1.6, so it did change from the previous video. Let me save this and let's actually try to run this program right after we make it an executable with the ch mod plus x, so ssh login.py. And right now if I run this, we get the question to enter the host target, so 192.168.1.6. Of course, don't put the same IP address right here. Check the IP address of your Metasploitable on your system. So once you specify this, press enter. The username is MSF admin and the password is MSF admin. Right now we let this run and we can see that we actually get the command to be permission denied. 
So what does this mean? This means that this user, MSF admin, doesn't really have the, uh, the permission to actually access that file that stores the root password. Now, this can be something that can happen if you basically brute force or log in or hack a non-root account on the SSH, you will not be able to get the uh, permission to run this cat at C shadow command. But let me show you how it looks like once we actually uh, can get that. So I have uh, another virtual machine right here, which is the OS virtual machine, I believe. Let me just check this out. Now you don't need to install it really. It's basically almost the same as the Metasploitable. If we do need it, however, later on, I will show you how you can install it. But for now on, we really don't need it. The SSH is basically something that you can brute force uh, on any any target system that has port 22 open. So right now, since I know the credentials for the root account for the uh, OBAS virtual machine, so let me just see, fail to open a session, okay. So let me just run a different one instead. Since I have a bunch of the machines right here, I can just run any of them and see if we can actually get the root password from that machine. So for some reason, those machines are not running, fail to open session details. Okay, it doesn't really matter. What matters is if you actually log into the root account from any SSH target, you will be able to execute the cat uh, at C shadow, which will actually get you the root password for the uh, root account. But let's see what else we can actually execute if we go to our SSH login.py. Let's actually execute something that we can which would be to, for example, let me just remove the grab root. Let's try to ls what's in that directory that we log in. So if we just specify everything once again, so that 1.6 msf admin, msf admin, we can see that the uh, only directory in that target is the vulnerable directory, which really is the directory on our uh, Metasploitable, so if you just type here ls on my Metasploitable, you can see there is vulnerable right here, as well as here. So we successfully coded a program that can actually log into the SSH and execute some of the commands and bring the output of those commands back to us. Now what we want to do is actually try to make this an attack, so let us actually in the next videos try to make an SSH brute forcer, which will execute a bunch of the connection tries with different passwords and see if it can brute force the SSH account. So that will be about it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I see you in the next one where we will start our SSH brute forcer. Hope I see you there and take care. Bye. Hello everybody and welcome back. And right now in this video we will start off by coding our brute forcer for the SSH. Now, in the previous videos, we managed to code the SSH login program, which will just perform the login uh, process uh, onto the SSH on a certain target, and it will try to execute some of the commands. We noticed that we cannot execute the cat at C shadow command on the target system since we didn't log in into the root account. But if you, for example, find out the root passwords for some target and manage to log in, you will be able to execute the cat at C shadow command and get the root hashed password. But right now, let's see what we can do in order to make this program uh, a brute forcer instead of just a simple login program. So let's see, first of all, what we don't need to change in this program in order to make it. We know that the connect function will always be the same, so we can just copy this function. Let me just copy it. Since we don't really need to change anything right here for now, maybe there will be some... Uh, some minor changes to this, but maybe not even that. So for now, let us just nano brute ssh.py. We will add our standard line, which is user bin python. And what we want to do is first of all, import the same library as in the previous video. So p expect and basically just paste the function, which is the connect function. Now, the reason why we are just using this function is because this connect function will work, uh, it's basically the same for every SSH. So 
if we don't really want to change it, we only want to use it, we already coded it, so there is really no point in us coding it once again. So, all we have to do right now is code our main function, which will actually take the the uh, brute forcing the process, so let us code it def main, we code our main function, we will select the host to be raw input, so we will prompt the users to enter the host IP address, so 192.168.1, whoops, not that, enter IP address of target to brute force, we close the double quotes, we close the brackets, we will prompt them for the user, so for example if they want to brute force the user, they can do that, so let's type your user equals raw input, enter user account you want to brute force, And the password is something that we will actually try with multiple different passwords. So we will need a password file which will contain multiple passwords which we want to use in order to brute force the account. So let us first of all make that file. Since we don't have it, we will just make a simple nano passwords.txt. And there we will, for the purpose of this tutorial, add the MSF admin as a password. So we actually see that this program will work after we've continued coding it. So in order to do that, let us just type here some random password, so administrator, admin123, password, password123, MSF admin, and hello world, for example. So we just leave this on this, we save this, we know that this is the correct password for our Metasploitable machine, so let us save this and exit and go back to our uh, brute force as sage. So we prompt the users for the username and the IP address of the host, and all we want to do is open the file, so we will open the file which contains our passwords in order to read from that file and in order to brute force the account with those passwords. So in order to open the file, you just type here any variable, in case I will name it file right now, and to open a file we use simple open command and then the file name between the quotes, so passwords.txt, we can use single quotes, no need to use double quotes, so this is the name of your file. If you named it the same as I did, so if you named it differently, make sure to specify a different name right here. And all we have to do right now, put a comma and select a mode that we want to use, which in our case is just reading from that file. Right now, what we want to do is actually just uh, make a loop which will go through this password file and read every password line by line. So in order to do that, we can just use for password, so for a single password, in our file dot read lines. Now we use this read lines function before. It basically just reads a single line or a line by line from this file. Uh, now what we want to do for each password is actually try to perform the connect function. So we will use our child once again as a variable equals connect, which is this function right here. And all we have to do is pass this host and user variable and the password variable to the target or pardon me to the function. So connect. We want to specify the user, since this is the first argument in our function, then the host, and then the password, which we read from the password file. So password, and close the brackets. So, we will perform this function, and if it manages to connect, we will get the uh, child back. So, what we want to do is, if this function works correctly, or everything is executed in this function, we want to actually print that we found the password, since if it connects correctly, that means that we found the successful password for this account, and we can print that we found that password. So print password found, and we can concat this with the password itself. Now, for example, we can now in the accept make the password not found, so this is the incorrect password, print with the minus, wrong password, and we concat the password to that. So let's see what our program actually does. So it reads the password, it tries to perform the connect function with that password, if it manages to perform the function that means that we found the password, so we will print password found. In any other case, if it doesn't manage to connect to that target, 
uh, we will print wrong password and we will continue to the next password in the passwords.txt file. So let us see what we can do right now. Everything right here should be good. Let's just call the main function in order to check if this will work. So we will just call it like this, save this program. Let's make it an executable, so root sh and let's run the program. Enter IP address of target to brute force 192.168.1.6. The user account we want to brute force is the MSF admin. And as we can see, it didn't manage to find the correct password. Now let's see why is that. So let us nano the it nano the file. As you can see right here, it said that all of these passwords are wrong passwords, which is not correct. We know that this password right here is correct password, so we might need to do some minor changes to this in order to make it work. First of all, what we want to do is, first of all, to make sure that our passwords are printed out as they should be. So, let us print the password. Let me just find where is the... Oops, I, I nano the wrong file, I need to nano the brute force file, so nano brute sh.py. And for password in file dot read lines, we want to just print password. So let us put this all under the hashtag so we can just print the passwords from now on so we can actually see what is wrong with this program. It doesn't even matter what the IP address is, so we can just print the passwords. And we can see that the reason could possibly could probably be because these passwords have a new line character right after that. So in order to change that, we need to strip the new line character from each of these passwords. As you can see, once it prints them, it leaves an empty space below each password. So let us see how we can fix that. SSH log, oops, once again, I nanoed the wrong file. Let us go right here, print the password. For password in file dot read lines, we want to make password equals password dot strip. And then we will add the new line character, which is the backslash n. So we strip the password from that new line character. And let's right now, oops, let's right now save this and try to print once again. One I stood up with one six, which is not really necessary right now. And right now we get the passwords printed out as we should. So let us try to brute force once again and see if it will work right now. All we have to do is hashtag this print password or we can just delete it. We don't really need to print that. And we want to remove the hashtags from all of these lines. So right now, let us see how this will work. If we run the program once again, we enter the correct IP address, 1.6. We entered the user account, MSF admin, wrong password, and it still didn't manage to find the MSF admin password as a correct password. So that is a problem that I didn't encounter before, but I believe I have a few ideas why is that like this, but I will show that in the next video so we don't waste too much of our time fixing the program. I will just fix it by myself and then I will tell you what the problem was and how we can fix it. So hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye! Hello everybody and welcome back and let us actually see what was the problem in our bruteforce.sh.py file. So I found out what the problem was and the problem was that this actually performed the brute force function uh, relatively fast and that's why I didn't even have enough time to perform the connection uh, fully or should I say it didn't perform the connection till the very end. So in order to do that what we want to do is add a timeout so this doesn't perform this fast we want to add a timeout but we do not want to add a too big of a timeout since then it will brute force one password per every three seconds so we want to add a timeout for example one second or half a second and the part where we actually want to add that timeout is the child.expect prompt so go down here and all we want to do is add a comma right here so this is the part where it can actually perform the part of this function really slow so it 
actually depends from the target as well, how fast it will give us the prompt for the SSH. It, ref it actually depends from our speed of the internet as well. So we want to give a certain timeout so this can actually have enough time to prompt us back with our prompt. Now, there is one, also one more thing that we missed, which is the prompt itself. We didn't copy it, we just copied the function, so we need to copy the prompt itself. But first of all, let's add the timeout right here to be 0 0.5 seconds, which I believe should be enough. If it is not, we will change that. And we need to add the prompt as in the sh.login.py uh, file. We need to add the prompt from the uh, strings that we actually uh, want to get from the target. So we add this. Let us just copy it from the, from the, previous, from the previous program so I don't actually spend time writing that. So I'll just copy this part right here. This is the prompt that we expect. Nano the root SSH and I will paste it right here. So I paste this right here. We have the timeout and right now if I just uh, try to run the program once again. So SSH brute force SSH. We enter the IP address of our net exploitable. The user account will be MSF admin. And let's see. So wrong password, wrong password wrong password and we get the password found. So right now we successfully coded the brute forcer as we can see that it uh, found the password which was the correct one which is the MSF admin. And let's see how fast we can make this go. Since our timeout is 0 0.5 seconds, let's see if we can actually make this go a little bit faster if we make a timeout or if we actually remove the timeout. So. Uh, Let's, let's nano the brute force.sh. We will remove the timeout to see if it will go any faster and if it does go faster if it finds our password. So 192.168.1.6 MSF admin. Enter user account you want to brute force. For some reason right now this isn't working. But that's why I said that we need to use the actual the actual timeout. So let us actually add it back. Obviously, we can't go without it, so let us add it to be 0 0.5 seconds. It goes relatively fast, even with the timeout being 0 0.5 seconds. So we can actually uh, use this as a program, as a brute forcer, so it is relatively fast. MSF admin. So what another thing you can actually do is try to make a threaded version of this program so it actually runs every password brute force on a, si on a single thread si simultaneously. So that is another option you can do. Uh, right now let us see what else we can add to our brute forcer. So first of all we can actually try to execute the command once we find the right password. So you can try to execute the uh, cat Etsy shadow command if you want to, if you are brute forcing our root account, or we can just try to test it out if we uh, are able to even execute the command right after we find the, find the password. So how we can do that? We can actually first copy the send, uh, send command uh, function from our ssh login.py, which is right here. So just select this function right here, since we don't really need to code it twice. We go to our brute force sh.py and we add our send function right here. So here it is. All we want to do is see where we can actually add that function and what we can execute. So let's see right here. So we try to connect. If we connect, we print that the password was found. And right after that, we can actually execute the command of target system. So send command we see what arguments that command takes. So it takes the child and the command. We can just paste this child to the send command function. And also we want to send the command, for example, let that command be uh, pwd, so print for kinderect or who am I, it doesn't even matter. You can try to execute any command you want. For now on, we just want to see if this will work. So let's press this enter. Let's enter the IP address, so 192.168.1.6, MSF admin, we start the brute forcer, it found the password and it also executed the 
command, which is the who am I MSF admin, and we got the prompted back with our our terminal output. So here is it. Who am I? The command is the output. Uh, the output is MSF admin. So if we check that on our metasploitable, you can see if I just type who am I, we can see we get the MSF admin. So this works correctly. But right now we can actually try to add a little bit of a color for to our program. So we did that in the previous videos. Right now we will import a, a, a term color library. So import colored, which will allow us to print incorrect uh, incorrect passwords in red and correct passwords in green. So you know that we, in order to do this, we need to actually have the Python 3 uh, library. And in order to have Python 3 library and this program to work, we need to change every print statement and every raw input statement in order to match the Python 3 syntax. So print statements should be something like this. And we add the colored function. We open another bracket. And then right after here, what we want to do is set a comma and print that in green since this is the password found. We close the two brackets and we want to do the same here. So red password when it is incorrect should be printed out in red. And right here we want to print the open bracket, colored, open another bracket and then leave this like this. All also, we want to change the raw input into just input. So just delete the raw underscore, delete right here the raw underscore, and save this. Also, here are two print statements, which we need to change as well. Error connecting. We need to set that between the brackets. And here as well, error connecting needs to be set between the brackets. Let me just see if that's it. So let us try to run this. Python 3 brute force.sh print child before so we also need to nano that so print child before needs to be in the brackets as well and also let's actually remove this end command since we don't really need that we just want to make a brute forcer so let's see if now it should work no module named be expect so Python 3 doesn't seem to actually have the pexpect. Okay, so no module name pexpect. Let's see if we can install it for Python 3. In order to install it, you can just type pip3 install Python 3. Oops, not Python 3. Uh, pexpect. So let's try that one. Now, we might not even have the pip3 installed. I'm not really sure. But we can try to... If this doesn't work, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what does matter is that our brute forcer does work. It can find the uh, right password for the SSH account. It can brute force relatively fast. And we actually uh, can attack a single target with a good password list. Such, for example, is those password lists with 10,000 uh, most used SSH passwords, which you can use in order to test on some target that you have permission to scan on. So we successfully downloaded the pexpect library. Now let's try to import it in Python 3 to see if it worked. pexpect, expect. So it works like now. Let us run the brute sh.py. Enter IP address of the target to brute force 192.168.1.6. Enter user account you want to brute force msf admin. So wrong password. Let's see if it will find it. And we can see our program works. We found the correct password. We printed it out in green. It is easily noticeable. And our bird forcer is now complete. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and I hope I see you in the next one where we will actually start coding some of the FTP attacks. So hope you enjoyed this and I hope I see you in the next lecture. Bye. Hello everybody and welcome back to the next lecture. And right now, let us start off by a simple FTP attack. So we, in the previous videos, coded some of the SSH tools, such as the brute forcer for the SSH. We managed to uh, attack the target with our simple passwords.txt file, and we managed to find the correct password. Right now, what we want to do is try to code something similar for the FTP. So we know that our metasploitable is running FTP port open. So if I just run nmap of our metasploitable, which is now 192.168.1.6, not 16, 6, and I run this, you can see that it has the port 21 TCP open. The, pardon me, FTP open. So 
this is a really common port to be open on many servers. Now, one of the main vulnerabilities right here is that this is not really secured, which I will show in some of the next lectures. By secured, I mean these credentials for this. So if I FTP the target, FTP 192.168.1.6, uh, apparently we do not have the FTP right here. apt install FTP. Not really sure if this is possible. So we are installing FTP in order to perform the FTP connection to the target. Uh, what I was saying is that these credentials from the target, since we will have to specify the username and password for the FTP port, can easily be sniffed on a local network. So they are unencrypted, they go literally just in plain text and you can pick them up if you are sniffing on the local area connection, which I will show you once we get to the section where we actually attack our local network with sniffing packets and uh, sniffing passwords and so on. But for now, let us see how we can actually log in to the FTP with our FTP brute forcer. But before we call the FTP brute forcer, I want to show you a simple attack, which is called FTP anonymous login. Now, some of these server admins allow other users to perform anonymous login in order to check some files. So we can easily write a simple program, which will do the same. So we will try to anonymously uh, connect with just a uh, non-existent username and password, and we will see if that will work. But first of all, let me see if right now, if I go and type the FTP, which I would do if my terminal worked. So let me just, whoops, not here. I want to go to my Kali Linux machine, clear the screen and try to FTP to my uh, Metasploitable machine, which is 192.168.1.6. We get the connected to this IP address. We get the version of FTP running, uh, which is a vulnerable version. So I know that because of the, uh, there is in the Metasploit, there is a module that actually exploits this. So you can check it out by yourself if you want to. For now on, it's just good to know that it's a vulnerable version, but not to this attack. I believe we will not be able to anonymously log in, but I just want to show you since there are a lot of servers or administrator of servers that actually allow this to be uh, used on their FTP. So right here, we need to specify the name. Uh, I'm not really sure. I believe it is MSF admin. Please specify the password, MSF admin. And we can see login successful. Remote system type is Unix using binary mode to transfer files. So we know that the username and password for the uh, Metasploitable is MSF admin and MSF admin. But let's see that we don't really know that. We will try to brute force with a password list the same for the SSH just right now. Uh, we will brute force the FTP port. So let us see how we can do that. In order to exit this, just type here exit. And let us first of all, nano our anonymous login ftp.py. So nano, let's call it anon login ftp.py. We want to start off with our user being Python line. And all we have to do right now is port is to import a library, which will allow us to perform the connection to FTP more easily, which is the library FTP lib. So this is the name of the library. We can import it. I'm not really sure if it comes for Python two or Python three. If it doesn't come for Python three, we will pip three install it. Don't worry. And all we have to do right now is actually, uh, Let's first of all prompt the user for the for the host to actually attack, which will prompt with the enter the IP address. Whoops. So we'll prompt the user and let's actually run a function on login on our host. So this function doesn't exist. We will code it right now. Uh, this is our simple, you can call it a main function, even though it is in outside any function, we will not put it anywhere. We will just call the anon login. So def anon login, and we will specify that the argument for that function is the host name since we specify the host in the argument bracket. So host name, oops, host name. And what we will try to do is actually just perform a simple connection to the FTP with some random username and password. So we will try to actually uh, make an FTP variable to be ftplib.ftp of this host name. 
This is just the syntax for this library that we imported. And all we want to do is perform the login function that our FTP library allows us. So FTP login. In the function we all we, all we need to specify is the username and password. So we can just type here anonymous. And we can just type here anonymous as well. Doesn't really matter. We can specify anything we want since this is really random. And all we want to type right here is print if this manages to actually execute and we manage to log in with these credentials, which we probably won't since I don't think Metasploitable is actually allowing the anonymous FTP login. But we will see in just a second. Let us first of all print the, uh, for example, plus string of our host name. Host name. Or actually our host name is a string, so we don't need this string before that. So plus host name. Let's make a space between this and we want to plus FTP anonymous logon succeeded. So we put a dot right here, we close this, and we want to FTP quit in order to exit the FTP connection. And we will return true as this did work. So if this works, we will get this printed out and we will know that the anonymous login is enabled on the target system. If it doesn't, however, uh, we will just expect any error. So we can just do exception comma E, which means it stands for basically any error that occurs during this connection try. We want to just print Oops, let's use the double quotes since we use the double quotes in the upper part. Plus hostname, plus FTP, anonymous, logon failed. So this is basically the entire program. As we can see right here, what we are doing is just trying to connect to the target with some random credentials. If that manages to actually work, we will print that the anonymous login succeeded. If it doesn't and we get some error, we will print that it failed. So let us see how this will work. If we save this program, control X to exit, we ch mode it in order to make it an executable. Let's run it right now and let's see enter the IP address 192.168.1.6. We let this run, so it says FTP anonymous logon failed. So we can see that the Metasploitable target doesn't have the anonymous logging option available. So that is good for every server, since there are a bunch of other attacks that can open up if this is actually available on some server over FTP. But trust me, there are a lot of servers that actually allow this for some reason. Let me just fix this since here we don't have a space. Let's specify space right here. So FTP or and on login FTP. Let's specify just a space right here and that would be about it. So this is our anonymous login uh, program, which works, I believe. Now all we have to do is test it on some of the... Now all you have to do is actually do multiple tests, multiple attacks on FTP servers, and you will manage to find sometime a server that actually allows this, which can potentially allow you to proceed with the further attacks. But from now on, in the next video, we will code a much more uh, common attack or something that we can do on any FTP server, which is basically to brute force the credentials in order to log in over FTP with the correct credentials. So we will do that in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye. Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial where we will code our FTP brute forcer. So, let us first of all think what we need to do in order to do that. Now it is very simple, it is very similar to the SSH brute forcer. All we need to do is specify a, a list of passwords, or basically our password list file, which we will use the same one as we used in the in the SSH brute forcer. So we'll use this uh, same passwords.txt file. So if you don't have it, make sure to create it. Let me just nano it so you can see which passwords are here. So we have the some random passwords, which is, for example, admin123, password, and so on, and the correct password, password, which is msfadmin. Now then all we want to do 
is use the FTP lib library in order to perform the connection with a certain username and a certain password. Now in order to make this even better, we can try to actually uh, brute force with both of the usernames and both of the passwords. Now what I mean by that is we will not prompt the user to actually specify a username or password for that account, for that FTP account, we will actually make a passwords.txt file which will contain both users and both passwords, separated by two dots. Now this is a very common password file, so you can find a bunch of password lists like this online that contain both user and password separated by two dots. It looks something like this, so admin two dots administrator, then we can use some numbers, we can add right here password password, we can add right here root password. Here we will add root as well as MSF admin and after that we will add MSF admin, MSF admin, which is the correct username and the correct password and here we will have world hello, hello world. Now let me explain this once again. This is the username and this is the password. This is how we will actually import the file and we will watch the first part uh, what we will do is, first of all, we will read the first line of the file, which will be all of this, then we will split that line uh, uh, where the two dots are, and then we'll use the left side of that line as a username and the right side of that line as a password. So that is the basic idea behind our brute forcer. So let us save this password file. Let us nano ftp brute.py. First of all, use the user share or let me user bin Python line and import the FTP lib library. So this is all good. Right now, all we want to add, prompt the user for is the host IP address. So we can do that with simply just typing right here host equals and then let's use raw underscore input enter targets IP address. So we prompt the user for this and this everything that user needs to specify. Let's put it as a star so we decorate it a little bit. And all we want to do right now, uh, well actually we need to prompt it for one more thing which is the password list file. So they can actually specify that too. If they don't want to use the one right here, we can prompt that to actually specify the path to the passwords.txt file. So passwd file, let's call it like that equals raw underscore input enter passwords file or let's specify the username and passwords file so user slash password file and path so they know that they need to specify the entire path since if that passwords.txt file is not in our current directory they will need to specify a full path to that file in order for our program to be able to find it. So once we prompt the users this, all we want to do is run the brute login with the uh, arguments as host and the passwd file. Now this brute login uh, function doesn't really exist. We will code it right now. Uh, as I said, all we want to do is use the FTP lib to connect and to send the username and passwords and we want to open the password file and read lines and split the users by the uh, two dots so everything on the left will be users and everything on the right will be passwords. Now let's see how we can do that. First of all let us make our brute login function. Let's call it the same otherwise this will not work. It takes the input of a host name and it takes the input of a passwd file. So password file and the host name. We specify the two dots right here. And right now, first of all, let us actually open the file that we asked user for. So we can actually open it. Or we can just type here try to open it. So if the user specifies the wrong file, we will prompt them with the uh, error that that file doesn't exist. So try to Let's make it pf, so this is the variable for our file. Let's open it with the uh, argument passwd file, since that is the variable that we specified right here, and we also sent it to our brute login function. And we want to open that file for reading, so let me just put here comma instead of the dot. 
we want to read from that file. So we try to open it, except print, we want to print file doesn't exist. All we have to do after this is actually perform the same for loop that we did in our SSH uh, brute force login. So all we want to do is for each line in our pf file dot read lines. So for every line that we read from that file, we want to split it by the two dots. So the username, we can call it like this. The username will be everything as I said from the left side. So how we can do that, we can use line.split. And in the brackets, we need to specify where we want to split it. And we want to split it by two dots, as we saw in the passwords.txt file. And in order to specify that the username should be everything on the left, we can just add in the square brackets zero right here. This basically means uh, that once the line is split, it will make a list of actually all the components that are uh, in that line splitted by two dots. And the first component will be the component from the left, which is uh, labeled as zero, since in Python, as we said, the counting starts from zero. The component on the right, which will be the second and the last component, will be the password, which will be labeled as one. So we can do that with simply just typing right here, password equals line dot split split we want to split it by the same path uh, part so we split it by the two dots and we take the second argument which is the everything on the right so this is how it should be and let us print that we are now trying to uh, brute force with this username and password so print Let's just use Python 3 since I'm not really sure how this will work with Python 2. So just change everything to be for Python 3. Not really sure how this path right here, since sometimes this split can either work or not depending on the Python. At least I had some problem before with it, but let us just uh, make this a Python 3 program. So just remove the raw underscore input and just type here input as same as here and all the print statements just put inside the brackets. So simple as that. And what we want to print right here is basically just trying and then let's add the username plus let's split it by the slash and let's add the password. So password. So what this will print is basically something like this, trying admin admin so it should print something like this so let us see what else we need to code all we want to do is actually code the actual logging in right now so we can try that so try to log in we will set the ftp variable to ftp lib.ftp from our host name which is the host ip address so host name and right now our login variable will actually perform the login itself. So FTP login on the username and password. So we close the brackets right here. And in case this works, we want to print that we found the password. So print, we add plus, login succeeded with and let's add the username plus slash plus password we close the brackets we add a space right here so our program actually doesn't get the error and we actually want to quit the ftp session right after this so ftp.quit we can do it with this and all we want to do is return from our function, we want to return the username and the password. In case we actually want to use it for some future uh, attacks, but right now all we want to do is code a good function. So right now 
all we are left to specify is actually what happens if it fails. So accept. We only want to actually pass since we don't want to waste the memory and the time for our program. We don't want to execute any code right after that. All we want to do is actually, let me just double check all of this. So we split the line, we print trying this, we perform the connection, and in case the login works, we print that login succeeded with this username and password. Actually, this right here we do not need, so let's just remove it for now on. Let's see right here. Uh, all we have to add right now is in case everything right here finishes, we want to print, for example, if it doesn't find the password and it actually uh, went through the entire list, we want to actually print right here print. So let us add the double quotes. Password not in list. So that we know that there is not password that actually can be uh, used in order to log into that FTP in this passwords list. So let me just double check this once again, or let us just try to run it and see if it works. It probably won't, we'll probably have to change some of the things. So let's first of all run it with Python 3, since that is the Python that we used in order to make it. We enter the target's IP address, 192.168.1.66, and we press enter. Enter the user password file path in, uh, Right now, since our user path file path is the actual same directory, we only need to do is to specify the name itself. And let's see, trying admin admin, password not in list. We can see that it didn't find the password. Password not in the list. But let me just see why does it print this after every, every try. So let's see what we can do with that. As we can see, we have the same problem as in our SSH brute forcer that we have the empty space right here. And another problem that we have is this line right here, which is printed out every time we actually try to brute force with a certain username and password. So let us nano FTP brute. This line right here, we actually want to tab out. That is the reason we actually want to tab it one line out since it is actually belonging. If we tab it in, it will belong to this for loop and it will print it every time. So we fix that just by tabbing it out. And in order to actually remove the new line, we, all we want to do is just type here dot strip from the new line character. Oops. So let me just find this. So here it is. So right now, if we run it once again, let's see what will happen right now. 182.168.1.6 password.txt. Try again admin administrator, trying 123123 admin. So let's see if it will manage to find it. Trying root password, 123. Trying root MSF admin, so the next one. And we can see it actually did work, login succeeded with MSF admin, MSF admin, and we get the password not in list. So let us actually edit a little bit this more. So we don't want to actually prompt the users with this if we find the password, since this can be really confusing if you actually uh, find, uh, use a big file and it actually manages to find the password. Uh, we don't actually want to prompt the users at the end that the password is not in list. So let us see how we can do that. We can do that by simply exiting the program right after we right after we uh, find the password. So let us see right now if it will work. So 182.168.1.6 passwords.txt. It will try to brute force and right now let's see it should actually quit the program right after we find the password. Now this is going a little bit slow, but better something than nothing. So here it is, but it still tries to actually go further on. Not really sure why. Let us see how this will work. So let me just check this out right here. Not really sure why this didn't 
work. Maybe if we actually instead return from the function, so let us return the username and password. So if we return, it shouldn't actually print anything afterwards. So let us try once again. Passwords.txt. Let's let this run. The next password should be the password for our account. And we can see right now, if we use the return, it actually returns from the function, so it doesn't actually per, uh, continue doing it. And we actually get printed login succeeded with MSF, ad, MSF admin slash MSF admin. So we successfully coded our brute forcer. It does work. We can see that we can actually brute force the passwords with our passwords.txt. It separates the list of our passwords for the username and for the password. And that would be about it for this tutorial and for this attack on FTP. Hope you enjoyed it. And in the next section, what we will do is we will actually try to code some of the tools used for password cracking. Now, for example, if you get a hashed password from anywhere, from a website, SQL database, from a target system or basically anywhere else, we can see how we can actually run the attack in order to decrypt that password and in order to crack it. So that would be about it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.